Peace everyone, Unmaskart here, and welcome to another live stream. Today I'll be working on one of my assignments that is in block one of the Evolve program. I've mentioned the Evolve program a few times this week and uh, made the video on Monday. So as you can see, I got the shapes filled in and today I'll just be focusing on finishing this painting by adding in the gradients, the highlights, and the reflections. Hope everyone is having a lovely day. Let's see, where to begin? I think, uh, I think I'll start on the pear. Oh, hey there, Anushka. So the first step to take my transition value And I'm just going to break the line between the shadow and highlight color. Once I get this Color laid down, I'll start working the edges, soften the transitions. Hello, RLK. Welcome. Good to see the two of you in the chat. Let's see here. That's uh, pretty wide for the color, so. Going to paper towel to wipe off the excess paint from my brush. And then I'll use another color to help with the transition. Well, another value. Is oil painting good for beginners? Yeah, I mean, there's no... There's no reason you can't just start with oil painting. Absolutely. Um, that's one of the benefits of Evolve program is that you don't, you don't need any experience to do it. Uh, oil painting is known sort of to be one of the more difficult mediums, but it's really not so much the case. Uh, anybody, I mean, eventually, everybody is a beginner at oil. You know, I remember the first time that I used oil paint, and the experience wasn't so different that it felt inherently harder than all other mediums. It's different, yes, but it's not... It's not, I wouldn't say that it's a harder medium to learn. 
And the, uh, the Evolve program does a really, really good job at introducing all of the, the basic steps of working with oil paint so that you don't feel overwhelmed at all doing, doing paintings like this. Uh, this here, this is the 14th, I believe, I believe this is the 14th painting in block one in the Evolve program. And if you were to, if you were to start the program, you would get to this painting and probably about, oh, I'd say about a month and a half to two months, depending on how much time you can dedicate to your art. I'm kind of getting through all of these beginner paintings quite quickly. It only took me about two weeks, but I've been, I've been painting for, for a long time, so it's not expected that be the case with everyone. But you can easily do a, two paintings a week and get up to this painting in just a month and a half, two months. And once you learn the foundations of the techniques, which are very, very easy to comprehend and get comfortable with, just takes, it really just takes time at the end of the day. You'd like to start painting, should you go oil or acrylic? Well, I'll say the difference between oil and acrylic is, is significant. Um, I'm totally biased because oil painting is my favorite medium of among all mediums. So uh, I, I don't even like acrylic painting. <laughs> How much time does it take an oil painting to dry? So it's, it's a variable speed. Uh, a painting like this where I, I'm not like glopping on tons and tons of paint, I'm doing very controlled layers. This painting will only take about five days to dry to the touch. Um, and sometimes even less depending on the temperature. Um, and then after... I'd say I'd say a solid two weeks, like you can handle it without any concern at all. But I have paintings that are just, you know, four or five days, and I can I can touch them with my finger, and they're not th th there's no transfer or anything. The the really thick, heavy painted oil paintings they can take they can take months to dry but there's also there's also certain oils that you can add and certain products that you can add to the oil painting to speed up the drying time and then there's also oils that you can add to slow down the drying time so there's there's a lot of that That you that you'll pick up over time. But I really that's what I like about oil is the drying time. Because acrylic almost is just too quick. Uh, and there's there's things that you can add to acrylic paint to make it slow down. But my opinion on that is if you, you're going to take the time to add stuff to acrylic paint, you might as well just use oil and not worry about that. <laughs> yeah, it easily, like a thin layer of paint, you could probably get away with like maybe 48 hours, about two days for it to dry to the touch, but you wouldn't want to handle it or anything. Yeah, that, I, admittedly, that is what turns a lot of people off from oil painting, is the drying time. But when you're actually doing it, when you're actually oil painting, you don't you don't think about this stuff. You really don't. Um, it's 
it's such an enjoyable medium that you don't get caught up in the drying time of it. You sort of just... You, you sort of get used to it immediately and then you just enjoy it. Because it is a really enjoyable medium. With acrylic paint, you, you always sort of feel rushed. At least I always did. But with oil, just take your time. It's, it's probably one of the most relaxing mediums to use. Which is probably why it's one of my favorites. By far one of my favorite. Or my favorite medium, period. It's just the best. Do you need to paint in an open area? Um, only if the smell bothers you. Oil paints back in the day used to be quite toxic, but they haven't been for some time. There are still some oil paints brand specific and pigment specific that may be a little too toxic to paint in a small closed area. Uh, some people don't like the smell of oil paints. I, my space that I'm working in right now isn't that large. It, it really isn't that big. And I don't smell the oil paint. Uh, some people have a little bit more sensitive smell. But uh, no, it's it's not like you have to be in some large ventilated space for to work with oil paint it's it's a safe medium oh good morning mima good to see you it's just uh just getting started with the the gradients here on my hair So I switched brushes. Now I'm using this is a number 10 filbert and using it to very very gently just brush the edge to help create that soft gradient. I grab another paper towel. I'm going to use this one to sort of dust my brush off. I use this one to keep my brush clean 
while I'm sort of blending out this transition here. Just takes a very, very light touch. So the uh, block one of the Evolve program sort of broken up into two sections, or actually three sections now that I think about it. The first few paintings that you do uh, are just meant to help get you used to working with a paintbrush. and identifying values and you you get you get four values to work with and the first couple paintings is just laying that flat value there's no gradients in the paintings and then and then you get introduced to creating gradients like this what i'm doing here And you do a few paintings where the objects have these gradients. And so you do the flat colors like this, and then you create the gradient after you get the flat color in. And then the next stage, the final stage of block one, and you do, you do 20 paintings, by the way. You do 20 paintings in block one. Uh, the next stage is reflections and highlights. And that gives you the opportunity to expand the, the forms of your objects a bit more, which is really nice. Oh, good morning, Andrea. Good to see you. And so that's what this this painting here, I get to create a little bit of the form using reflections and highlights. But first I need to get these soft gradients. Soft, the soft gradient is, is a fun challenge with oil painting, getting these these blends. It's a challenge and it, it takes it takes time, but that's what makes it so fun. Um, you know, I would not try to do something too complex if you're just learning oil painting. There's there's kind of a reason that when you're learning oil painting, still life such as this is sort of the the first thing that you tend to do in the beginning. And the the reason is when you're inexperienced with with oil painting the first thing that you need to learn is brush control you need to learn how the paint moves and how to control it with your brush and then you start introducing these gradients once you get those down then you can you know start pushing yourself further with something like a portrait because within a portrait you're going to have all of these basic skills they're all going to be used and they're all very necessary to completing a portrait. So if if you're new to it, you're you're going to want to start with something very similar to what I'm working on here. Just to get familiar with those initial technical skills. 
very important to develop them. Everything, everything that is complex that you intend on learning to paint later on can be broken down into, into these very few technical techniques, creating, creating clean lines and creating soft gradients. See here. Add a little bit up here on the stem. A little, little bit of a gradient on the stem. Kind of has a hard shadow, but there's a little softness to it. A little bit of a roundness. I think I'll leave that top portion hard line. Now I think my gradient on the pair is good. So now I'm going to add the reflection in the shadow here. This is the color that I'm allowed to use. All of, uh, throughout the entire block one section of the Evolve program, you have very, very specific rules that you're meant to follow. And that leaves, that leaves all the guesswork out, which is very helpful for people getting started. You have, you have no guessing as to what you're supposed to be doing. It's all very, very clear. And of all the people that I've spoke to, they have managed to be very successful in their, their development of learning oil painting and just art in general because the thing the other thing with the program is that the information that is discussed is very universal across all mediums so it's it's not it's not just that you learn how to oil paint it's that you learn to think more like an artist you you learn to break down subjects in ways that help you address more complex subjects across all mediums. So it's super, super helpful. And, the, you know, even though I haven't learned anything new yet in the program, because I've been an artist for so long, it's still very enjoyable. So it's completely irrelevant to you know, how, how much you already know. It's still fun to work through these, these foundational paintings and sort of just continue developing your technical skills. There's, you can, you can never practice the basics too much. There's just no such thing. My, my favorite medium, Mima, is oil painting. It has been since the like the first day that I've ever tried it which was a, about 10 years ago 2012 spring 2012 that is when I first oil painted my first oil painting was a black and white landscape it was just um it was a practice piece 
in the class. I took a an intro to oil painting class while I was at college, and um, I immediately knew that like that was the medium that was for me. I absolutely loved the medium, still love it. There's just there's just nothing like it. Oil oil paints just they just look so good. They just look so good. So yeah, if if I could only choose one medium to use for the rest of my life without any hesitation, it'd be oil paint. just realized there's one one value that I forgot to mix What about you? What's uh, is colored pencil your favorite medium, or do you have another one that you like? I didn't, I didn't notice uh, if you painted at all on your YouTube channel. If you if you have not tried oil painting, then I, I have to recommend it. You don't, you don't really need a lot of paint to do cool things with. I mean, I'm just working with four different, four different shades of gray right now. And then the way the Evolve program teaches you to mix, you have those four different gray values, and then you mix three in-between values from those four as like stepping ladders for your for your gradients. Oh, you thought that I would say pastel? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no. I I do like I do like pastel a lot. I I really do, but um it still doesn't it still just doesn't compete with oil. Oil is just my absolute favorite. And uh, truthfully nothing even comes close. Like nothing nothing has even made me consider changing oil from my my top my my top favorite all the all the mediums that i've that i've experimented with and tried oil paint is just the pinnacle of my my favorite Yes, you you can uh you can make oil dry faster. There's 
don't quote me on it, but I believe linseed oil. You'd have to you'd have to Google it. Um, I'm not. I've never concerned myself with trying to speed things up, um, but I believe linseed oil speeds up the drying time for oil. But I've I've come across conflicting information. I've heard linseed oil slows it down, but I've also heard that it speeds it up. I've I've never really, like I said, I've never concerned myself with the drying time because I like the slow I like the slow pace. And so um I don't actually know off the top of my head. I know that I've looked it up. But I just don't remember because there's so many different oils that people people use in their paintings for various reasons. Oh, you did some watercolors? That's cool. Yeah, I you know, I I sort of did the same thing. I I didn't do much of watercolor, but I did acrylic painting for some time, and I even did some acrylic painting on my channel, but not not very much of it. And then just like you, I sort of just switched to dry mediums. Really, I think it was just about the control and the simplicity that sort of made me switch and sort of focus my content around the dry mediums like colored pencil and pastel. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're just, they're sort of simple to set up, you know? So, yeah. I can, I can totally, I can totally relate to that. Um, have I done digital art? Yeah, actually, I, I still do digital art. Um, it's, it's sort of inherent in with, with what I do do regularly i use i've been working with photoshop since i was 13 uh what got me into photoshop funny story so i had this i had this friend when i was in seventh grade and his aunt was really into photoshop and what she would like to do and i remember her showing me her work so I don't know if it's really popular anymore, but there used to be these these things called bases. Well, there you could still probably look it up, but um, they they they're called bases, and what they are is they're essentially a posed figure that you bring into Photoshop and then you draw clothes onto it, and that's sort of so. It, it removes the aspect of needing to draw the body of a character or something. And what she would do is she'd, she would get these bases. She'd just download bases or whatever, and then she'd bring them into Photoshop, and then she would draw clothes onto them and just design clothes in Photoshop. And when she showed me her work, I was... I was floored. I was super impressed because at this point I was already really into art. I was drawing, I was on deviant art. I was so I was I was into it and I was really really surprised at how good she was. And that was my first introduction to Photoshop actually was through my friend's aunt and um so I got a copy a bootleg copy of Photoshop as swiftly as I could. And I just started playing around with it. And I did a few of those bases. I got a few bases and, you know, tried to learn how to draw and color and all that stuff in Photoshop. And it was, it was a complete disaster, <laughs> but um, it was the beginning of my my learning in Photoshop and I use Photoshop every day. I, every day I use Photoshop for something, whether it's to 
make some corrections on a photo, make a thumbnail for my YouTube channel or to, to draw. I, I have the, um, the Procreate app on my iPad and I use that for sketching and practice because it saves paper. Good morning, Ozzy. Good to see you. Well, maybe, uh, maybe hanging out in the live stream, you'll, you'll be lulled off to sleep. I've, I've had, uh, I've had comments in the past that people were watching my live stream and fell asleep and woke up and watched like my, fell asleep with their computer still playing videos and they fall asleep watching one of my live streams wake up to a completely different live stream. Of mine. Actually, that's that's one of the things that's uh, set off my channel growth back when I had about forty thousand subscribers. Is that out of nowhere, people were people were falling asleep to Bob Ross and his old videos, and then they would wake up to one of my pastel live streams that I did a few years ago, and so. Um, I had one of my live streams, actually three of my live streams go viral simply because people were falling asleep to Bob Ross <laughs> and I got a bunch of, uh, bunch of comments on those old live streams of people saying that they fell asleep watching Bob Ross and then they woke up watching me. So kind of funny. Hey there, Reba. Doki. The pair is looking pretty good. I'm I am limited to the um to the values that I'm allowed to use for these assignments in Evolve. Because there is a pure white highlight that shines on the pair. But what I am allowed to do is use a half shade darker. Because this is actually the brightest value that you're allowed to work with. And so what I'm going to do... I will try to compensate the surrounding area a half step down so that I can get that shadow, that highlight, to sort of show up. Got some of that darker paint in there. And I'll sort of just imply that highlight by going darker around it. And it will be rather subtle, but at least it looks a little bit more like a highlight. Thank you, Mima. Yeah, I've, I've gotten many compliments on my voice over the years. I've always found it kind of funny because... I never considered it before. Always makes me laugh when people mention it. Because it's just... It, it's truly just something I have no control over. <laughs> 
makes me laugh a little bit that people enjoy it so much. Because I have never... I, I went my entire life never hearing such a thing. You know, I've nobody has ever once told me that my voice was soothing. And then I got on YouTube, and I've had thousands of comments that say just that. And so... It, it, it it makes me laugh a little bit, but I do appreciate the compliment. Oh, you take care, Anushka. Uh, some tips on digital hairs: just focus on the focus on the big shapes first. I'm going to be doing a tutorial here soon on hair specifically, and the the. Uh, technique of doing hair is universal so i'll probably actually show it in a couple mediums just to demonstrate how universal it is oh hey there cherry i didn't even see you pop in uh can you keep your palette of paint for a day from day to day without it drying um there are some there are some ways to sort of preserve your paint they're all a little uh sketchy you could potentially buy an oil palette that comes with some kind of lid or some kind of way to cover your paint to help keep it from drying out the problem is that Almost any method is going to have a little bit of, it's going to leave your paint a little chunky, potentially. Um, I'd say the best way, if, if you just have like a normal flat palette, I'd say the best way, if you really, really, really want to save your paint, would be to mix a little bit of extra oil into it and then cover it with saran wrap. That's, that's one way you can sort of keep your paint for about 18 hours. You're, you're definitely going to want to use it the next day, mix it up and everything. Um, and you even then, you may still need to scoop out a little bit of the chunkiness because what you'll get is you'll get these tiny little specks of the paint that sort of feel rubbery and you you just won't be able to mix those back in you'll have to scoop them out but i've done it i've 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 saved my paint from project to project many many times um another way to do it is to find little containers. So uh, little containers that you can put paint back into that are going to be airtight. Uh, you could probably buy something similar to this. That way, when you're done painting, you can just scoop that extra paint right into one of those little containers, close it, and then reopen it the next day. And that may be a more effective way of doing it. But for sure, it, it can be a little frustrating at times uh, dealing with putting too much paint on your palette and then, you know, not being able to use it the next day. Admittedly, it, it does feel bad to ever throw away any paint. You know, it's always, it's always easier to add more paint to the palette than it is to you know, put it back in the paint tube or to save it in some other way. So uh, keep that in mind. It really, when it, when it comes to mixing your colors, because I know, I know it can be tough when you feel like you've mixed the perfect color and then all of a sudden you're done for the day and you have like this big, pile of the perfect color
it's always good to memorize recipes for the colors that you're, you're getting. And of course, there's always those times where you're trying to get a very, very sp extremely specific mix of a color. So I'm going to move on to the little stand holding the air. But I had more paint on my brush, I guess not. You know, I had um, I had a few people sign up for the Evolve program using my code already. I just wanted to remind everyone that was possibly considering signing up. I have my my code and the link and everything is in the description, but. There's only 10 available to use my code, just so anybody that may watch this later or is watching now, I don't know how many more will be left by, you know, the next few days. Just wanted to give everybody that if they were thinking about it. I was I was hanging out in the the online classroom yesterday for a few hours actually. The live the live chats that you can join in on in the program the the video calls I was hanging out in those I I really enjoy it. I really enjoy just jumping into the calls and chatting with the other Evolve members. Oh yes, of course, Cherry. Yeah, I mean, oil is just oil is just such a classic medium. It's it is a timeless medium, unlike all others. I have I have no doubt the artwork that's been made with soft pastels, or even more recently with colored pencils colored pencils is quite a fresh medium and um you know if you think a couple hundred years ahead i think i think colored pencil work is is going to stand the test of time a little bit a little bit i don't think it will ever be revered in the way that oil paint is But uh, yeah, it's got a it's got a strong footing, that's for sure. But oil paint is just on another level. Just, you you really can't uh, really just can't compete with it. It's in a lot of ways, you know. It's 
just looks so good. You know, a lot of the a lot of the people that I talk to that are in the Evolve program, they've they've done nothing art wise. They've sort of just wanted to do they just wanted to do something. And so their first experience with with doing anything art related whatsoever is is oil painting. It it can very much be done. I was asked earlier if, if oil painting was good for a beginner, and it's good for everybody. It really is. It's no different than, you know, trying to pick up a pencil and learn to draw something. There's, there's techniques that you learn, and then you just keep trying to get better at them, and it's the same with drawing, same with acrylic painting or pastels. There's certain techniques that you have to learn in order to be able to do it even at a at a basic level. But anybody can learn to do it. sort of jumping ahead here and doing doing some of the reflections just to get just to get this shape of the stand here a little bit more obvious Really hope you guys are enjoying the stream today. It's nice to it's nice to bring oil painting to the live streams. Something I've sort of never really considered to be something that I wanted to do, but I don't usually work this small. These are just eight by ten sizes. Uh, for the paintings, and when I when I oil paint, I like to paint big. So it was it was nothing that I'm set up to do. My current my current situation, and I don't I just don't have room to to do big oil paintings. I have nowhere to put them. <laughs> Barely have any wall space, and I can't hang I can't hang heavy things on the wall since my walls are concrete putting can't just put a couple nails or screws in my wall to hang stuff unfortunately
Oh, hey there, Miss Barry. Doing this lovely day. Righty, I think, uh, I think I can take my other brush and start working on softening these gradients here. It's actually, it's actually kind of nice that I can see my painting on my monitor. Because now I can, I can see it without the glare. I never had my I never had my lights positioned to compensate for like working with the oil paint. Usually you don't you don't want you want ambient light, you want like pure ambient light when you're working with oil. That way you get minimum amount of glare. And I have the light setup's not too bad. You can see a little bit of glare up here on this in, in the live stream. Um, but I would love to, to just be able to see that in person, but fortunately I can see it on my monitor, so I just look up to see if my, my values look right, and it's helpful actually. Oh wow, have I really been streaming for an hour already? I'm going to finish this painting today, so however long it takes me, I will keep working till I get this done. Kind of slower stream. Streaming in the morning has always been a slow time for my prim primary North American subscribers to tune into. But I imagine after another hour or so, some of the East Coast will be waking up to tune in. Maybe maybe next Friday I'll do uh do the stream like in the evening. Yeah, yeah. Time time can go by really, really quickly. My longest stream that I've ever done was eight and a half hours. Um here on YouTube. I've done I've done a twelve hour chess stream on Twitch before, but I 
though I was really tired at the end of that 12-hour stream. Eight hours of... Eight hour stream of artwork I find to be a bit bit more demanding. Goodness, these values do not want to mix together. Yeah, I have I have a Twitch as well. Um some some artists find some success on Twitch, but personally, I'm not a huge fan of streaming on Twitch. I there there is some interactivity benefits to Twitch and the subscription. Mm. Like this subscription format of the platform is, it's kind of ideal in some situations, but I don't feel like it's very conducive to artists. You know, tw Twitch was always geared towards more of the gaming side of streaming. And so it, it's sort of built upon that, that culture and audience if you think about it. So not, not really, uh, not really like the art fan platform as much as YouTube is. I feel like YouTube is a bit broader in its audience and art has always been a little bit more popular. I mean, if you go over to Twitch, I don't know how often you you watch Twitch or anything, but uh, you know, you go over to the art section and you won't really find like a lot of viewers there in comparison to pretty much any of the popular mainstream video games. Not to say that that should be expected or anything, but it's just a small, it's, it's really small audience. So I, I feel like no matter how popular you get on the platform as an artist, you'll you'll be very limited in your growth unless you unless you sort of do both Twitch and YouTube. And even the even the most popular Twitch streamers rely heavily on YouTube in the sense that they they bring a lot of their content over to YouTube to help grow their Twitch audience. So they, they sort of always have to default back to YouTube to help bring people over to their Twitch channel. Because I, I mean, I used to watch Twitch pretty regularly. I'd, I watched a lot of chess streamers but i i barely i barely tune into twitch anymore because it's just so obnoxious <laughs> it's just obnoxious like chat is always just a mess
Every every once in a while, I do jump over to Twitch just just to look at the art section to see if it ever got any better. But every time I every time I go over there to the art on Twitch, all I see is digital artists and um what are those what are those um streamers like the avatar streamers where they they have like some character that they speak through virtual character or something they like they don't they hide their face behind a cartoon i don't know what they're called but like every time i go over to the art section it's just it's the same mediocrity and streamers that have like a furry animal talking. It maybe it's just not my scene cuz people do it, you know, people watch art there. And no no disrespect to the artists that do it, it's just not something that I'm into. Goodness, this gradient give me a hard time. I don't want to get too much paint into my brush here. That's why I'm constantly wiping it off. I want to I want to keep this brush nice and soft throughout working on my gradients today. Can't get this gradient sh shape correct. There we go. That looks better. Although now this this top part strangely looking darker than it should for whatever reason. There we go. Got rid of it. Yeah, that looks looks good. Go ahead and do this section down here Appreciate everyone tuning in to hang out with me while I'm working on this, by the way. All the questions that you've been giving me. I could, if, if I could, I'd just sit on, sit on a stream and answer questions all day. 
I could, I could do that for hours. I think, I think my favorite hobby, aside from art, is just answering people's questions. What are uh, what are some of your guys' favorite subjects to work on? Like, do you do you like still lifes? Do you like portraits? Do you like landscapes? Any any abstract artists watching? What's kind of your your favorite artwork to look at? Also. I'd say for me, it's, it's always been, uh, portraits and figures. I love, I love, love, love doing faces and bodies. Like it, I just find it to be the most difficult. At least it's, it's what I struggle with the most. I struggle with portraits and figures the most, just the, uh, I don't even know. I just find it the most challenging. And no matter how many I do, I always tend to have a slight disappointment in the work that I produce. Anytime that I do a portrait or figure study or something in, the, in that realm, it's always... Uh, always room for improvement i feel like for myself when i do those those subjects oh you always thought oil paint was applied really thick oh no that's you know that's just a that's just a style you know that's just a style you can that's the thing with with oil painting there is such a huge diversity of looks um and you know what i think that's really what makes it stand out as a medium above anything else because the the different techniques that exist within oil to get such vastly different works is unlike is another thing unlike any other medium you have a little bit of that with acrylic you know you can you can glop on and get little um impressionistic with acrylic of course but in comparison to oil still doesn't even come close Uh, if I wasn't an artist, I appreciate all the questions, by the way, Mima. Uh, if I wasn't an artist, I would be a, a, a math teacher. Most of the people that have been following me for a long time are aware that I have my degree in mathematics. And um, the only reason I'm not teaching math right now is because I'm teaching art. And the only reason I'm teaching art is because I did not get accepted into my master's program and had to take a year off school so the the program that i was going to continue applying to you can only apply once a year and so i applied immediately after i graduated from university with a my degree in math and uh, they didn't accept me so 
had to take that year off of school. And so I just focused on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel was just a hobby. I just liked to, to do art and make video progressions of, of that art. And, um, so I just, I just did that. And after that year off, you know, I saw some, I saw some real opportunity to sort of just make a living doing YouTube. And so I made a small goal and I told myself that if I could reach this goal at the end of the, the year, I would, uh, I would continue doing YouTube and I smashed the goal. It was a very small goal granted, but, uh, you know, not all goals have to be super lofty. You can, you can have small goals. Sometimes, sometimes the smaller goals are the better ones to have because when you come, when you completely crush them, you can, uh, really build up your confidence that way. So that's, that's sort of what I did. And, and then it's just grown from there. I mean, I was doing YouTube full time when I only had a thousand subscribers. Um, and it was really when I hit 10,000 subscribers that I was really trying to find the best ways to monetize my work. You like portraits the most as well, Ozzy? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be doing a colored pencil portrait next. Um, once I finish the, the Jaguar. Oh, thank you, RLK. That's just about what I want for this. Sort of got a little sloppy down here. Hold some of that light color to there to clean it up. Oh, Ozzy, are you from, are you from Cuba? I mean, I know that you live in Florida now, but. That's cool. This line here getting a little bit. bit distorted. It's better. I see. I, I see you, Vishva. You popped in earlier, didn't you? I don't know if I said hello, but hello. Now for the darker tones, let's see here. Darker value here. One shade darker. 
And right here, add a little bit. This really helps enhance the form of all the shapes here. Really cool three-dimensional. Brush is getting a little, a little too dry. Oh, hey there, Beth. I don't, don't remember if you have been in a previous live stream before. Oh, welcome. I'm glad you're able to to jump in and say hi. Yeah, I know it's I know it's a little early there in the states for too many people, but um, I'm glad you made the effort. Always appreciated. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool, Ozzy. Yeah, I, I moved to Poland 2015. It's been six years now. Coming up on seven pretty soon. About, about six, six more months or so. I'm just trying to clean my brush a little bit here. Try to loosen it up a little bit. After you've been, I just, mainly I paint with just the same, the same brush 
but after a while, like, uh, I'll show you. After a while, it can get pretty stiff. Like it doesn't really want to move. It gets really rigid because of all the, the oil in it. But you can loosen it up on a paper towel if you sort of rub it like that, sort of um, separating the bristles back. Because the oil paint starts to dry a little bit. And so it gets a little tackier. You can kind of separate the bristles, sort of fanning it out. And that will give you a little bit more give bristles. Switch to my larger brush here and try to soften some of these gradients with these darker values I just added. May have went a little bit too heavy here. That color. Be hard to spread that out evenly. For all of you that are tuning in, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like button for me. Because I do hope you are enjoying the stream. Having a lot of fun. Hard not to have fun when you're oil painting, though. Yeah, it's really, really starting to have a nice three-dimensional look to it. I really, I really like the way that the Evolve program has broken down sort of the learning process. One of the, one of the reasons that I wanted to continue on with the program after they asked me to do a video for them was uh i wanted to see i wanted to i wanted to see what the structure of the course was i wanted to see how the information was portrayed so i'm i'm not really learning anything about the 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 painting that's something that i've already been Oh, that's something I've already known for years, but I'm always looking to to learn good ways to sort of present information that's most conducive to learning. So I'm always I'm always in, intrigued by different educational processes, and I'd say pretty quite similar, very similar. That's sort of what drew me to the to the course was that I felt like the uh, both the methodology and the philosophy were very similar.
Oh, so you moved to Florida relatively recently. What uh, what other parts of the states did you live in? For me, I, I grew up in Ohio. And then after I joined the military, I moved out to Washington State and I was out there in the Seattle area for about nine years until I moved here to Poland. I joined the military when I was 18, so pretty much uh, lived away from home entire, my entire adulthood. Kind of scuffed up that little bit. I'm actually gonna just grab a clean brush. this little part that I messed up. Sometimes, sometimes you get like one single bristle, one single little hair coming off your brush and just manages to scrape paint where you don't want it. Just a tiny little spot. This one actually has, there ain't no way you're going to be able to see it. This one has a single hair sticking out so far from the rest of the brush. I use some scissors to cut that because that is going to drive me. Nothing to do with a, that little hair. That's better. Got rid of the little hair. Just this one teeny tiny little spot I want to try to smooth out a little bit more. And then I think I am ready to move on to the cone. Is this my own composition? No, actually, this is not. So with the first block, so the Evolve program is broken up into eight blocks. And the first four blocks are the foundational blocks. And I am in block one. And block one has 20 paintings. And one of the cool things that they do um, is they send you high quality reference photo. So they give you the reference photo and based off of the reference photo, you're required to what they want you to be able to do is select and isolate the values based on whether it's a shadow or a highlight. And so the first step is to identify the shadows versus the highlights, which is very basic, but 
you come into the program under the assumption that you don't know anything. So you start from the ground up and then um, you, uh, you do what I've been doing here. So you fill in the flat color, just like the cone is the color, the, the, the cone is completely two dimensional, right? So you start with that and then you uh, do the gradients. And um, that's sort of the, the process that they give you to work through the paintings. And then from there, um, you'll progress through the 20 paintings in block one. Block two, I'm super excited about. Block two, um, you have 20 projects, but the first 10 are proportional drawing. So they send you a shadow box. And that is when you get to set up your own still life projects, take your own pictures, and then um, they teach you how to do proportional drawing, which is a really fantastic skill. And then you, so you draw 10 of your own still life setups, and then you paint those 10. So 20 projects all together. Um, but uh, yeah. Block two will be really exciting. Oh, good. Good morning, Diane. Good to see you. Oh, wow, Ozzy, you, uh, you've, you've been all over, been all over the United States. That's, that's, that's cool. I think um I think I'm good with uh this here. So time to move on to the code. Let's break up Let's break up this hard line and start creating a nice gradient. Okay, let's go ahead and wipe the brush off. A little bit darker. Separate these two colors. So there's actually not too much left for me to do, aside from this, uh, yeah, I got the gradient on the cone, 
Now this isn't, there's not much of a gradient to this. It does come down a little bit, so I'll add that, but uh, yeah, pretty much just that. And then I'll soften the gradient for the background a little bit. Other than that, not too much more to do. But I'll be back. I'll be back again next Friday, working on uh, on another painting, another still life. As you as you work through the program, the still life projects here they get just a little bit more complex each time so you have you know you have to do more gradients and have more brush discipline and all of that so they're, they get they get fun it's not it's not all super easy or anything Yeah, you know, you, that's the thing with still life is that no matter how simple the objects appear to be, they're actually just, when you get them showing up on paper and you start creating the forms and you create that illusion of three dimensions, like it just, it becomes interesting. It really, really does. That's that's one of the reasons I really enjoy still lifes. Still lifes are such good practice. All right, let's get that color out of the brush now. Getting a little bit harder. Clean this brush. What I like to do is take the paper towel, pinch the bristles slightly, and then just wiggle the brush out like that. And then you'll get like that pocket of paint. You can do that a couple times. Just like this. I'm not trying to pull the bristles out and I'm not squeezing really hard, but you'll get it flat and relatively clean. And then from there you just kind of mush it into the paper towel see a little bit of the paint come off but eventually eventually it gets lighter and you really want to make sure that you push the bristles all the way in if you're going to a lighter color you really want to make sure that you do this because you don't want any of that really dark paint that's still up in the bristles to come into your lighter paint. Just put it in the wrong, just put it in the wrong color. Did I? No, I didn't. Went crazy. But I put it in the wrong color.
Brady. Go add a little gap on the bottom of the cone. Some dark color to lift it up off the table a little bit. Yeah, it just slowly, slowly turns into a cone, yeah. I think I can go a little bit long the line. This angle makes it a bit harder for me to get the super fine lines that I can get. That. Yeah, uh, and I'll add the I'll add the reflection on the back side where I clean this back side here. Just a little bit of a highlight or a reflection. That will really help create that three dimensional look. And I can even add it here too. Can't really see it too much on this spot, but um, it helps. Been watching stuff about cast shadows, still hard to figure out. Like, uh, do you mean how to determine if or where a cast shadow is, or like if you're freehanding it or something like that? What, um, what about cast shadows are you sort of trying to figure out? Let's see here, let's start with the lighter color first. Try to get this transition nice and soft. Where, how big direction color. Yeah, cast shadows certainly certainly require a little bit of sort of a development in your three-dimensional perception how how familiar are you with drawing in perspective by the way you know sort of i've i've always um I've always felt that it was really important to be proficient in two-point perspective 
because it helps you develop the three-dimensional sort of understanding of shapes. And when you're proficient in two-point perspective, you're going to be able to sort of mentally visualize those things just better. Interested to know how I deal with artist block. That's actually it's a very common question. And certainly, certainly something that I deal with. And I don't think that it's something that will never be dealt with by any artist, professional or otherwise. What I do and what has really worked consistently for me is I have this daily routine and I'll just sort of give you the backstory after I tell you what the daily routine is but when I when I get up in the morning one of the first things that I do is I look at other people's artwork other professionals and amateurs and I use a website called ArtStation, and it's just it just has such amazing work in it. ArtStation has just such great artwork, and I'm sure there's other websites similar to it. I know there's this website called Pixiv, if I'm saying that correctly, but I think that's geared more towards like anime style manga but uh, pixiv pixiv has a lot is is primarily digital really it's it's really primarily digital art but uh, digital or not the work is fantastic and i really really like to start my day off with that kind of inspiration from from artists that when I look at, I am just in awe. Because there's, there's so many fantastic art, artists out there. There's just no, no shortage whatsoever. And um, so that's how, I, that's how I like to start my day because it gets you inspired sometimes sometimes it involves me collecting the pictures for reference or for things that i feel like i might want to draw myself so it gets me motivated in that way and the the thing about art block is that i i was in a huge slump for like a year and only recently only recently have I been able to get out of it, start really enjoying art again. I keep myself very consistent by doing doing the projects for the art club Monday through Thursday, which is nice, but it doesn't necessarily stop me from having art block and wanting to do my own kind of things. Uh, the one website that I used to use a lot was DeviantArt. I used to I used to do all of my scrolling through artwork on DeviantArt, but the website has just really gone downhill in the past five or six years, and I just don't even like being on the website anymore. And so I I stopped one finally. I had to draw the line with deviant art and it was you know it was my my routine I would wake up and I'd scroll through deviant art and just be impressed with all the lovely artwork but now you you just can't do that on deviant art anymore they have like you have to pay in order to like look at things and if you just go to the website and look at stuff it's it's like just a bunch of 
inappropriate things. And um, so I finally gave up on it. And then I came across to ArtStation and I was like, yes, this is what an art website should look like. And so um, uh, so once it, it took like a year, it took like a year. I, I gave up on DeviantArt and never go to the website anymore. And then it, I didn't have that morning routine where I was looking at inspiring work. And I, it just sort of stagnated my motivation. But once I found ArtStation and I was able to reintroduce that into my daily routine, uh, I started drawing on my iPad. I started doing some sketches in Procreate and I was drawing every single day. And now I'm doing these oil paintings and I work on them on the weekend. When I have free time in the evenings, I'll just, you know, grab a couple of my paints and, you know, fill in some of the shapes on the projects. And for the past like two months, I've been super motivated. Just no art block in sight. It's it's felt really, really good. And so that's that's what I would suggest adding to help you combat art block. The other thing that I always recommend when getting rid of art block is just to do anything. It doesn't it doesn't matter what you're drawing, painting, or anything. Start start something. You could draw a pear. I usually recommend banana, but it's never never made a difference. It's never it's never made a difference as to what I'm working on. If I start something, the art block just goes away because I I get back into that meditative state of working. Cause art doing art has always been meditative to me. It's it's been that, you know, as I'm doing it, I sort of forget about time or anything else, and I just sit in there putting paint on canvas or pencil on paper. Everything else just kind of dissolves away, and it's peaceful. You can listen to some music or listen to an audiobook or something or podcast or whatever you like to listen to. Heck, you can turn on one of my old live streams and listen to me ramble about stuff. I think one of the important aspects of getting past that those hurdles of art block or really about knowing yourself, figuring out, figuring out your own psychology. You know, before I was, before I was a math major, I was a psych major. I, I wanted to be a counselor. That was sort of my, I wanted to be a psychologist because I always fascinated with the psychology of other people and the psychology of myself as well. Sort of looking myself in the mirror and discovering what it is that motivates me. Trying to understand myself better is really what drove me to psychology and you you make better choices for yourself when you understand who you are. And I think art block is a a really good sort of example for for why you should spend the time to understand yourself. Because when you know yourself, you 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 can recognize when you're lacking the motivation to do something. And uh 
sort of find the find the way to resolve it. I'm I'm really glad to, to be out of my art block as well. I mean, like I said, it it lasted like a year or more. It lasted a long time, and it was you know it's I never I never really discussed it much um, with anyone other than my wife. I've always kept it a little a little personal because I didn't want to I didn't want it to be negative in any way. I didn't want I didn't want pe people to think that I wasn't enjoying what I was doing cuz truthfully it was it was during my live streams that I sort of forgot about it. It was always it was always um outside of the live stream that I felt I felt uh sort of the negative effects of not really being that motivated to to do art and so it was, it was sort of being being consistent with my live streams that helped keep me going keep me working and uh all of the lovely company i get every stream You guys and your questions keep me keep me going even in the hardest of art block times. Oh hey there, Cece. And Naomi to see you as well. Uh, so all of the all of the shapes here was laid at the same time. Uh, oils do not dry fast. Acrylics dry fast, oils dry slow. Um, brush good brush control and you can get edges like this and i'm very very meticulous with my with my brush during the initial stages of laying down all of the color and um the background is applied last so so i painted i painted all these shapes and everything and then i painted in the background so i paint around these edges. So all of these edges are just with uh, precise brush control. Oh, that's good to hear, Mima. Yeah, Cece, you're gonna you're gonna be getting your your block one box tomorrow, huh? So you'll be you'll be starting off the uh, paintings real soon. And you'll be doing them just like this. Painting in the shapes, painting in the background around it. You know, the, the secret, the secret to good brush control is understanding how the shape of your brush can be manipulated to get certain 
certain points. So corners, corners and things down here and all those little corners, instead of thinking of the brush flat, think of it vertical and you can see just how just how sharp that edge is when you get the brush vertical instead of like flat. And so you paint you paint edge down to get those really, really teeny tiny little spots, all these little spots down here, that little black line that I added there. You know, that's just the edge. Just use the edge and really controlled. The other thing, and um, this sort of, this isn't in the program. This, I, I, didn't, I didn't see any information on brush control really, uh, starting off with the, uh, the Evolve program. But if you're, if you're ever struggling with brush control, don't forget you have a second hand. And so what I like to do is I like to use my arm and my wrist of my second hand to rest my hand on. And so sometimes you might catch me using my two hands like this, but I'm resting my, my hand on top of my other one. And this gives, this gives me a lot less um, or a lot more of a relaxed hand. Because if you're holding your arm up, so if you're, if you're holding your hand and your arm up, to paint, your your muscles are going to be tense because you're using them to lift and to hold your arm up. But as soon as you release that tension on those muscles and you get to relax this hand, you'll find that you have a lot more control inside your fingers. So for those teeny tiny little things, you want to use your fingers for the sharp stuff, the teeny tiny little details. I gotta stop saying teeny tiny. I think I've said it like 15 times already. The re the extra small details you want to use your fingers for. That's where the finger control comes in. For the larger stuff, that's where you want to use your whole arm, shoulder, wrist, elbow kind of thing. Uh, I did not paint these shapes on the live stream. I don't mean, by the way, I did. I did it off camera yesterday. Uh, it's it's not very exciting to watch. Um, so it, I figured if I get if I get the flat shapes put in, yeah, it's you know there's there's a, there's no um, complexity or struggle there. So I figured I'd just do that off camera. That way I have the shapes that I, and I can start working on the gradients and stuff. Find that to be a little bit, a little bit better to watch. But, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do it next week. I'll, I'll be starting a new painting by next week and I will, uh, save that whole process for the live stream. on these work on these gradients here and then um that'll be it for this painting the painting will be done so hopefully these gradients won't take me too long i put them in a little bit with the initial painting phase but um they still need some work Oh yeah, yeah, that's um that's really good practice, Diane. Yeah, you don't have to draw complex things to progress. Sometimes it's just the mastery of the basic shapes. Circles, ovals, ellipses. I mean, really when when you break down com complex shapes, they can almost always be broken up 
broken down into simpler, simpler shapes, ovals, triangles, triangular ovals, just about everything. Uh, I've been working in the program for three weeks. I think this is the end of the third week, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe four. I can, honestly, I can't remember. Because it took me a while to get my art supplies, because Polish Customs refused to give them to me for absolutely no reason. And so it was a bit of a headache dealing with Polish Customs. They... They had the package like two days after Evolve sent it. So it took no time whatsoever to get here. And um, they wanted me to pay so much money for it. And I was like, I'm not, no, like I'm, I'm not, not paying $200 for the package. You're out of your mind. And they were trying to scam me because it was, it wasn't technically, it wasn't Polish customs. It was, um, it was like the processing before some, some third party company that processes it. I don't, I don't know how it works here exactly, but it, it technically, it wasn't Polish customs. It was a different company that processes the packages. And, um, so they wanted they wanted me to pay a lot. And I was going to pay a lot because I, I thought it was normal. But then I told my wife how much I was paying, and she's like, that's what? Why is it so much? So when I asked why it was so much, they gave me information that was incorrect, and I told them the information that they gave me was incorrect. But they refused to correct it. And I was like, well, I'm not paying it. Send it back. So they sent it back, and then Evolve sent me another package. And that one had no problem. That one, the, the package had no problem getting to me. And then, um, and then I, I probably had the package for a week before I started it because I was busy. But um, yeah. Not not very long is the answer. <laughs> three, three and a half weeks, maybe, I've been working program. Okay, Mima. Well, I appreciate you coming by. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Probably see you in your live stream tomorrow. And for anybody in chat that hasn't checked out Mima's YouTube channel, be sure to go over there and give her a subscribe. Yeah, I've done, um, this is painting 14. So I've done, I've done about four to five paintings a week since I started the program. I think I did this, the first, I did the first seven paintings eight days. I wanted to get through the really basic ones, start getting to something a little bit more, a little bit more uh, enjoyable for me since I'm not an amateur. I'm not a newbie at painting, so uh, I just wanted to get through some of the uh, dear things.
now I'm trying to get through the rest of these uh, the the rest of these block one paintings so I can get into block two because that block I'm really excited for. Oh yeah, yeah, still life in any medium is just a good idea. Just always a good idea to do still life in charcoal and pastel all would be fantastic mediums for this for this subject matter here. I mean, you, you can't really tell with this painting how non-realistic I'm working right now because I'm, I'm working within the constraints that the Evolve program sets for you. And this is meant to help you develop in a very controlled, very controlled way, which is important. Um, and even though I can go beyond this myself um, I'm working through in the controlled way because I want to get the truest perspective of the program and um, you still get such great results and the other thing is the the group chats you know where you can hang out with all the other Evolve members and talk about talk about anything you want really but uh, Again, there was a there was a, a lady in there yesterday because I was hanging out in the group chat like for hours yesterday, and she's I don't know eight paintings in, eight paintings into block one. So she's doing paintings very similar to this with even slightly lower um, or slightly higher constraints because these paintings you're allowed to do reflections and highlights. Whereas anything below 10 only do gradients. Um, and she was saying how she had already sold a couple paintings because you're going to be making paintings that look just like this with only a few small variations, no, no highlights. So you wouldn't see that subtle highlight in the pair and no reflections. So you wouldn't see the slightly lighter value here and the slightly darker values here and the light and stuff. So there's st the, the gradients are, would, would be even simpler at that stage. And she's never painted before and she's already, she's already selling work. Like that's fantastic. And, and it's so common. That's, that's one of the things like everybody in the program talks about they're not even through block one and they're already selling artwork. And it's because you're able to immediately create stuff that looks just like this. Because the, it's all technique. This is 100% this is technique and doesn't really take any any special skill set to be able to do.
These gradients are always the ones that frustrate me the most. Because <laughs> they're, they're just long. Just long, even gradients. They never want to blend. <laughs> I never want to blend even what I meant to say. Yeah, so the the thing with oil is that it it sort of wants to stick to the surface you're putting it on if you're working on a good surface. And so um, this brush here, I, this is a slightly larger brush than my other one. And you can see that I'm constantly wiping it off over here on this paper towel as I as I work. And I'm I'm very gently very gently, like I can barely even feel that on my finger, touching the top surface of the paint so that I can get it to move very, very subtly so that I can build up the, the gradient, get that transition really soft. That's, that's my goal. And the key to doing it is keeping your brush dry and light. So dry and light is the key. I think you get more brushes later on in the program. But when you first start off, you only get these filbert brushes. You get like a 4, 6, and a 10, I think. Get a couple of each. And the larger brush, having longer bristles is just inherently softer. Yeah, oil paint, you know, if you if you control it, you can keep it very neat. It you know, it the my working space, this little desk here is you know, nice little I have my palette over to the right, you can't see it. It's off camera. But it doesn't take up much space. It takes up less space than this 8 by 10 8 inches by 10 inches size uh, canvas paper here. Takes up less space than that. I actually, I actually cut the the uh, pallet paper in half. They send you um, they send you pallet paper in the program. They send you everything that you need. The only additional items that I use is the the masking tape and the paper towels. Everything else comes in the the block one box. You get a you get a new box every every block. So all of the supplies that I have right now uh, is is great, but I get even more. Block two, you get 
a shadow box to set up your own still life. Well, I'm glad I could give you guys a, a glimpse into the, the magic of oils. Because there's a reason it's my favorite medium. And and honestly, if you if you think that you have the time to add this medium to your repertoire, then I highly encourage you to sign up for Evolve. I really do. I would not be streaming this right now if I didn't think that the program was fantastic. And you know, I very easily, very easily could I just start teaching oils. I could just sort of copy and paste the entire program. But they've done such a good job that, and I have far too much integrity to do such a horrible thing. Use the uh, use the sign up code in the in the description for a hundred dollars off. There's a, there's only there's only ten available spots for that uh, that promo code. By the way, they only gave me ten spots, and they told me that. Um, they told me a few people had already signed up. So right now I right now there might only be five spots left. have they really I didn't know that they were changing their name I don't really use Facebook anymore it's too annoying last weekend it was really annoying um I don't know if any of you watch UFC like I do but it's sort of become relatively routine for me to wake up Sunday and watch UFC because it generally is on live um, like three, two, three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday for me and I like it but I don't like it stay up all night watching it kind of thing so I, I watch it Sunday afternoon is when I watch it. And um I was super excited for the uh Costa Atori fight last weekend. And turn on my computer, Facebook's just up. The first thing that I see is who wins the fight. And I'm like, Are you kidding me, Facebook? I'm not even subscribed to like this 
random page you're trying to shove down my throat. I, I only check Facebook for messages, really, from family and friends and stuff. So if I don't see any notifications, I just go away. But I was super, I was irritated the whole day because of that. And I, the, the fight coming up this weekend, I mean, the whole, the whole card, I won't dwell too much on the UFC because I don't think there's going to be too many fans and watching right now, but I'm, I'm not going anywhere near Facebook tomorrow or the next day because if any of the fights happening this weekend get spoiled by Facebook, Oh my gosh, I'm going to throw my computer off my balcony. I mean, I suppose that goes for any sport competition that you may be into. Facebook just spoil it. I don't even care. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for setting up my still life, Diane, in the shadow box. I'll probably end up using that shadow box to create some some fun projects uh for the art club as well, you know? No reason not to. I'm I'm gonna buy some some objects. Some fun little still life objects to uh, to set up some cool still life. Probably do some fruit and veggies, some potatoes and bananas. You know, got to do the classics. Got to do the classics. Um, so the one, the one, uh, object that I got was, you know, those, those drawing figures, they're oftentimes made out of wood. Uh, I got one of those, but it's made out of plastic and it's a lot more detailed. You can articulate the, the limbs and change out the hands and stuff. So I got one of those because it looks really cool. And it's it's sort of the uh, the anime style, the manga style. So it has those those proportions to it. So that was one of the objects that I intend on using in my block two shadow box. And um, I might get I, I might just get like objects like this. Like a sphere, cone, and maybe like a cube. Those are always helpful to prop up other objects as well. Kind of give them a really cool sort of stage. So I might do something like that. I don't want to buy too much stuff for the setting up still lifes because I already have like no room in my flat for anything. <laughs> And both my wife and I have sort of become slightly addicted to buying stuff at, off Amazon. <laughs> and uh, I got I to gotta reel her in real quick because I don't want my wife to become Amazon addict because I have to pay for it. <laughs> And so far, you know, as long as we've lived in this teeny tiny little flat, we've we've been pretty good at managing our stuff so we don't get like too much stuff.
gosh, I can't get this. Did I put paint here? I'm starting to think I didn't put any paint on this side. It is not blending. Losing my mind. It, it, to me, it looks like it's blending, but then when I look up on the camera, it doesn't look like it's blending. I know I put paint here. The base layer is a little bit dry since I painted it yesterday. There we go. That's sort of better. Yeah, so the the shadow box you you can control the light um to give you this photo here, this is an example of what you get in a shadow box with a single light. So this is a single light source still life setup within a shadow box. It's sort of it the shadow box allows you to isolate the objects controlling the light a lot more. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes in the mail. But it, it will be a little while before I get it probably. This strangely looks darker. Maybe because it's just more wet or something. Paint down here. Oh, that's funny, Diane. What a coincidence. Okie dokie. I think I am going to untape this and call it done. Uh, is there a link where I get my reference photos? There is not. Um, are you talking about the reference photos for this? Because if you're talking about the reference photos for this, this is in... Th these reference photos are sent to me. They're photographs, like physical photographs. Through the Evolve program. But if you're talking about, like, in general, where I, where I tend to look for my reference photos, um, I use Google a lot because, uh, since I teach, um, I'm not using, I'm not using pictures for commercial purposes. Like I'm not taking, I'm not taking, uh, copyrighted images and selling them. I'm just teaching people how to create different things so I can use whatever photo that I want. But if you want royalty free or copyright free, um, I recommend, let's see, what are the two sites that I use? Uh, I, Pixabay and Unsplash. Those two websites are, are pretty good. I mean, it's hit or miss. It's just sort of like a photographer's dumping ground, but you can get some pretty pictures from, from Pixabay and Unsplash. Let me, uh. Let me grab you links.
those sites and I'll put them in chat. So, give me a second. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do that and then I will uh, untape this painting here. So here is Pixabay link. Here is Unsplash. So those two sites are royalty free. Yeah, there's 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 some Facebook groups and stuff, forums online that you can probably get some good photos from. Um, and then also Pinterest. Pinterest is one of my favorite search engines for pictures. Uh, a little less likely to find royalty free stuff, but if you're not, I. You know, one of the one of the confusions that people have, and this is sort of a, this is sort of an a YouTube artist creation. People are afraid to do copyrighted images because they feel like if they do them at all, they're able to get sued. But the reality is you can draw whatever you want. You just can't commercialize it. So technically, if you if you draw it, you can't sell it in any way. You can't sell your original and you can't make prints and sell those. But you can still do it as practice. So any any photo that you find, it's not illegal to draw it or paint it. It just becomes illegal when you start making money from it. So don't be able to don't be afraid to use any resource that you want to find whatever picture speaks to you. Uh so the what I was saying, what I would was trying to uh, say, Naomi, is that my role is educational, which opens up the door for me to use whatever reference that I want, regardless if it's copyrighted or not, because I'm doing it, I'm using it for educational purposes, and there is no copyright when it comes to using something for educational purposes. So if I draw somebody's photograph as a tutorial because it's in that educational format, I'm not selling the image, I'm not doing any of that. I can, I allowed to use whatever photo I want. Zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> Alrighty, so there's the uh there's the finished painting. This is painting number fourteen. So got six more of these kinds of paintings to do in block one. So that is gonna do it for today. Yeah. Uh, just shy of three hour live stream, not too bad. Uh, I will, I'll be back doing, doing another still life next Friday. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Of course, on Monday, we'll be back to the pastel project. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, have a fantastic weekend. I will see you all on Monday. Take care. Peace.